Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining me. The person in that open is not with me. She is under the weather, as they say. I don't know where that expression came from, but I'm using it. And uh, she was diagnosed some time ago with lupus, so we've got to be real careful with her precious body, especially when you get our ages. We have a special guest today, uh, Lori Cardosa. Did I say that right? Cardosa. Cardosa yes. Moore is founder and president of Proclaiming Justice for the Nations with the mission to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand, listen to this, with Israel. We want you that are watching right now to realize that the Word of God asks us with a, an implicit request, stand with the Jewish people. And we want you that are watching to take a look at this, and then we're going to meet my special guest. Watch this. On May 14, 1948, Israel is reborn. The ashes of the Holocaust still smolder as the Jewish people celebrate a homeland and a country of their own after 2,000 years of exile, persecution, and captivity. Yet the question remains, are the Jewish people the legitimate heirs of this land? Get out of your country to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Phenomenal DVD. Let me remind you right now, and then I'm going to remind you during the show, and then I'll probably remind you again, because you won't believe. When you watch this, you will be absolutely riveted to what you're seeing because it is so well done. I love when Christians do, especially videos or movies or what, when they do them good. And Lori's husband, he is an expert on this kind of thing. So get your copy of this DVD. All the websites are going to be on there and anything that you want, uh, Pertaining to what we're talking about today, if you want additional information, please go to that website. And by the way, if you have access to some offering money, please give to this organization. I'm telling you, it is absolutely fabulous. We've known Lori for a long time, and, and my heart is with the Jewish people. I think it goes all the way back to, as a little boy, coming from Kentucky to Chicago, and my dad was in business, and he was in the jewelry business, and he would take me with him downtown Chicago, and he would always deal with the Jewish people in jewelry. He was diamonds and this kind of thing. And I had a love at that early age for the Jewish people, and he would tell me great things about them. They're the most trustworthy people, and if you're not trustworthy to them, uh, it, that's not something you ever want to be. So he was actually teaching me trustworthiness and being, being uh, loyal. And it was a neat thing. And, and years later, all of a sudden, I would wonder, why do I love the Jewish people so much? And it was at that early age my dad taught me how important they were. And there was no prejudice until I was later years. All of a sudden, I realized that people had 
prejudiced against the Jewish people. Even now in universities, it's like cool to be prejudiced against the Jewish people. So things are happening, and Lori, what a joy to have you. Herman, it is a tremendous joy to be here again with you. You're the best talker on this subject I've ever had. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I am definitely passionate about you, this issue. You, you, have, uh, you have a desire every day to get this word out to Christians and non-Christians as Judeo-Christian country that we thought we were, and, and we're moving so, so rapidly away from that. Uh, for example, Tennessee legislators agree with parents that anti-Semitic, anti-Judeo-Christian textbooks are unacceptable in Tennessee, where you live. Absolutely. Schools where this is seen right now, in Nashville. Absolutely. How in the world, in a state like Tennessee, a Bible belt, Correct. could this get past school board officials? How did that happen? Well, unfortunately, many people are not informed and don't recognize anti-Semitism anymore. And, and Herman, as you know, the mission of proclaiming justice to the nations is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand against the rise of the new anti-Semitism. The anti-Semitism that we're seeing today, which is similar to the anti-Semitism we saw in Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany, of course, was, um, was anti-Jewish, but today what we are experiencing is not just anti-Jewish. Today, it's anti-Zionist, it's anti-Israel, and of course, its goal is the same as it was back then, ultimately to delegitimize Israel's or the Jews' right to their ancient homeland, and ultimately to, to um, dishonor or delegitimize them as a people group, and dehumanize them, demoralize oh. them by telling them over and over and over, you are occupying somebody else's land. This land doesn't belong to you. And Herman, the, the, the thing that disturbs me the most with what we're seeing in our textbooks, and keep in mind, this is not an issue just in Tennessee. These textbooks that are published by Pearson publishers are being used in in states across this country, in school districts across this country. Well, I and couldn't believe it's it's in Texas. I oh, mean, you're talking about Tennessee and Texas. These are states that you go, okay, the other states like Maine and Virginia and all of these others and and in that uh, you know New York, whatever. Okay, we we kind of understand. Right. But the ones we're talking about, we say never. But it's happening. Correct. Conservative Bible believing. Yes. States. The reason why we're seeing it, Herman, is because we're not paying attention. The enemy has been focused on our children with a laser beam for years. They're smart. And unfortunately, yeah. yes, we've thought, you know, in, in Middle Tennessee, Williamson County, where this whole issue erupted, um, it's, it's one of the top 10 most conservative counties in the country, one of the most wealthiest. And yes, there's, there's many churches there, and you would say that that is a Christian community. So how in the world did these textbooks get in? Pearson Publishers. Pearson Publishers, and keep in mind, Pearson Publishers is not an American publishing company. They are based out of the UK. 60% of their sales come from the United States. Their mission statement to their board of directors is to, to change the way America thinks. The Libyan government has 26 million shares of Pearson stock. Oh my goodness. They have two editors who edit textbooks in 37 states across the U.S. And one of those editors is an Indian-born Muslim who publicly stated that he is waging a bloodless revolution in American schools. If you get your children's, and I encourage your, your audience to, if they've got children, grandchildren in the, in the school system, get them to bring those textbooks home. Open them up to the Middle East wow. section. Open them up to the comparative religion section. You will find textbooks that have um, uh, 27 pages dedicated to Islam, 13 pages de dedicated to Christianity. These are in human geography textbooks. And you have to, you know, you can see just with children, with the, the number of pages, with all that information, word for word, all that information focusing on Islam, these children walk away thinking that is the most dominant religion in the world. Well, they've got publishers in Texas that are putting out stuff inaccurate pertaining Absolutely. to our history. Absolutely. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, these reside mm -hmm. in Texas mm -hmm. and they're putting out 
and incorrect people, history. People aren't paying attention, and even our educators. When when we brought this issue up with the the quote in the textbook in Williamson County, the quote basically legitimized terrorist attacks against innocent Israelis because the Palestinians are waging a war against Israeli government policies and army actions, wow. and that is absolutely wow. outrageous. And for when we when we brought this to the attention of the school board, of the school board members, of the curriculum uh, review board within Williamson County, they looked at the textbook and, and they read through it and they said we don't find a problem with this textbook and I, I said to them you can't you don't recognize they anti were there saying those words absolutely they saw the words and they did not see the, that this textbook was trying to build a just that one quote was trying to build a moral equivalency between the Palestinians argument that they're being occupied you got to read this it's, it's in your literature that paragraph right absolutely. there it is so well written that this is the quote, and, and parents, you have to hear this because for us to see it and, and to hear it, it's very disturbing, disturbing. But this is what the quote was that we had the issue with. It says, distinguishing terrorism from other acts of political violence can be difficult. For example, if a Palestinian suicide bomber kills several dozen Israeli teenagers in a Jerusalem restaurant, is that an act of terrorism or wartime retali retaliation against Israeli government policies and army actions. Competing arguments are made. Israel's sympathizers denounce the act as a terrorist threat to the country's existence, whereas advocates for the Palestinian cause argue that long-standing injustices and Israeli army actions on, on ordinary Palestinian civilian civilians provoke the act. There's so many problems with this quote. These three aspects. I mean, if you were a school board elected official and you read that and they're watching in Tennessee, you've got to be illiterate. You've got, you've got to be, you've got to be illiterate not to understand what that says. Or you've got to be indoctrinated already. And that's my problem with this type of rhetoric in this textbook, because it's talking about the Jews. It's not a problem. If we were talking about the Muslims, if we reverse the roles, it would be different. Then everybody would be screaming out loud and saying this is unacceptable. But it's the Jews, Herman. And you know, unfortunately, anti-Semitism is still rampant oh, within yeah. the Christian church. Isn't it interesting on a, on a university campus? In a Christian community. Yes, on a university campus. Yeah, we've got... We've got, uh, don't use the N-word, which I agree with. I mean, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Anybody uses it around me, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But but that's on university mm -hmm. campus, that's, that's uh, adhered to. Mm -hmm. But Not this. they can see a swastika sign and they'll go walk right past it. Absolutely. Let me tell you what happened to me. I was picking up my daughter from school in a middle school in Williamson County, the same county with the textbook issue. And um, I was sitting, it was after school. My daughter was in her club. I was parked in front of the school building. I have a bumper sticker on the back of my vehicle that says protect and defend. It has an Israeli flag and a U.S. flag next to it. Well, five teenage boys came out of the building. They had to walk past the back end of my vehicle, so they saw the bumper sticker there, and they were kind of laughing. It was September, so I had my car running, the air conditioning was on, the windows were up. I couldn't hear what they were laughing about, but I saw their expressions. They walk past my vehicle, the passenger side. They get about 20 feet from the front of my car. Two of the five boys raise their hand in salute. To Hitler, Herman. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Reverse that. What if they'd walked by with with a, a uh, rope noose, mm -hmm. making yeah. fun oh, yeah. of, of 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 African American? Yeah. I mean, let me it tell you. It wouldn't be tolerated. Oh my gracious! It would have been an it explosion would not be tolerated. In, the, in the college. I had the most chilling feeling come over me when that happened, Herman, and I sat there in my vehicle by myself waiting for my daughter and I thought to myself this is how the Jews have felt when they have been persecuted and they have been mocked publicly wow. Wow. and here I am sitting in my vehicle so you know feeling um, safe you in know, America thinking, and thinking and, I'm safe and in, in Williamson County in Tennessee absolutely and think about this Herman those boys 99% chance those boys were sitting in a, in a church youth program the Sunday before and the Sunday after. So where are they learning to salute Hitler? Are they learning it in the school through their textbooks? Are they learning it at, at home because of comments made? 
Where is it coming from? We're Christians, and Herman, this goes back to why this film and why our, our documentaries are so critically important for Christians, that we have got to educate Christians. We don't know our Bibles. Oh, we boy. don't study oh, our Bibles oh, anymore. Yes, yes. And we don't understand in light of the times that we are living in, we are in the last days. I don't think anybody can dispute that. It, you know, I, I, I don't want to get on another subject, but on Christian television, basically all you hear on Christian mm -hmm. television is how to prosper right using this right and most of them never get out of the Old Testament mm -hmm. I'm for the Old Testament you see I carry mm -hmm. the whole Bible mm -hmm. okay but I mean and that's why this subject it's, it's like oh my goodness Absolutely. I mean it's not they don't agree with it oh my goodness I never thought about that in America absolutely no, and unfortunately it's happening right here. And that's why we're telling, you know, the Lord gave me a strategy as I was praying through this whole situation with the textbook. And here's the fun, and here's the amazing thing. We had um, school board members and the, the school director, Mike Looney, when he saw that quote, they didn't think it was a problem. They didn't think it was worthy enough of pulling that textbook. He's got the They've right been name. using that textbook for six years in Williamson County schools, okay? So here now we have, we take this issue and I, su I um, submit all the evidence to our state legislators and I said to them, look, if we don't stop this now, we are indoctrinating our children subliminally. We all remember the subliminal messages back from the 70s when that whole movement started. But here we have subliminally, we are educating our kids yeah. to look at the whole Middle East conflict and have sympathy for the Palestinian cause when it is Israel, it is the Israelis who are facing wow. attacks wow. day after day after day wow. by terrorists in Gaza, in Judea and Samaria, or of course the world calls it the West Bank. But we're, what we're trying to do is to try to get Christians to understand that we are going to be held accountable. You know, you talked earlier about our responsibility in the opening of the program, there's this great quote in the scriptures in the book of Obadiah where God told the prophet Obadiah in the last days he was going to wipe out the descendants of Edom because they stood by while their brother Jacob or Israel was held in captivity wow. and they did nothing. And I want to say to Christians, if we think that we're going to get away with standing before Almighty God when he brought us into the world at this time in history, after he reestablished, as he foretold to the prophet Isaiah, as he reestablished and, and brought Israel back into existence, he brought the Jewish people, <clears throat> excuse me, back to the land. And we're alive at this time when these prophecies were brought into fulfillment. And he's gonna ask us as we stand before him, what did you do for your brethren? I was trying to find on my on my iPhone, but but uh, uh, it has been said that if if Israel laid down all of their arms and tried to bring peace with the Palestinians, they would de be dead within 48 hours. Absolutely. If the Palestinians laid down all of their arms and wanted peace with Israel, they would grant it. Absolutely. I mean, and, and let me tell and, and you. I know it's too dangerous to challenge that and say, okay, well, let's just try that. Mm -hmm. What I said was 48 hours, they would all be taken mm -hmm. over or dead. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and yet we're talking about let's protect them mm -hmm. because they're being somehow uh, uh, pushed back. They're not being given the rights here's and yet the Palestinians work for the Israelis. Here's the lie that the media doesn't want to talk about. The money, the wealth from the nations comes into the Palestinian controlled area. And where does that money go, Herman? It is squandered. It pays for more missiles. Well, Saudi Arabia is giving them all kinds of money. Absolutely. But so is the United States of America. And we're a Judeo Christian nation. We're the nation that should know better. In fact, this is what's so interesting. We look at our leadership in Washington, D.C., at this administration, and we look at its policies. It basically told Israel a couple weeks ago. You know what? If you don't get work out this these details with this, you know, uh, this peace agreement, and you don't accept this, then sorry, we're just not going to be able to help you in the international world. 
That is absolutely unacceptable. And there was a poll that was recently done by Pew Research asking Americans what they, how they felt about the whole Arab-Israeli conflict. Who would they side with? Herman, 72% of Americans polled said they would support Israel over the Palestinians because Americans see the conflict in the Middle East the same way you and I do. Sure. Remember, the majority of Americans, this is 7, 72%, but in Washington, D.C., this is not the, the, the narrative. Well, they show it through. Absolutely. Because it, it, we know better. It's kind of like Obamacare. We know better. Right. Even though the, the largest percentage of people in the 80% right. did not want it. Right. The other thing about, um, and as our, our viewers are going to see in the documentary film, when they order it, when they watch the full, we have laws. We have laws that are binding in the United States that agree that the Jewish people have rights to their ancient homeland. Every time Kerry goes out, every time Obama goes out, even Bush goes out yeah. and says, yeah. you have to divide the land. Yeah. They are violating federal laws. There's a, there was two um, joint resolutions that were passed in 1922 called the Lodge Fish Resolution. It was signed into law by, by President Harding. Both, both um, passing, both resolutions passed exactly the same way in the, in the House and in, 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 in the Senate, and basically stating that they have the rights, but every time our elected officials go out and speak, they violate even the law that is on the books. There's three international treaties, Herman, that declare Israel has rights to her ancient homeland in Palestine. But when you listen to them speak in the media, when you see their press conferences and they talk about this issue and they t tell Israel, you have to make more concessions, you have to release more prisoners. Oh, but Mahmoud Abbas, you don't have to recognize Israel as a Jewish state. It's okay. We shouldn't expect that of them. It's too much to expect that, that of them. Herman, it's, it's, it's unacceptable that we as a Judeo-Christian nation allow our government leaders to continue to perpetuate this problem. It is time for us as Americans to get on the phone, to contact our congressmen, contact our senators, and tell them. Does that, let me keep going on that subject, but does that do any good? Absolutely. And let me tell you how much good it does. I had a meeting with Senator Corker, which is Tennessee's senator, back in September, September 30th of this past year. And I went to him because I was sitting back watching what was happening in the Middle East with this administration, how Christians are being slaughtered in the Middle East, how Israel doesn't know when the next missile is going to come or where it's going to come from. And I said to, to his foreign relations staff that I met with, because Senator Corker is a ranking member of the Senate, of the, of the Foreign Relations Committee. He also represents the belt buckle of the Bible Belt, the state of Tennessee. And I asked his staff, to ask him, what is he going to do to pull back this administration? Everywhere this administration goes, whether it's Tunisia, whether it's Libya, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Syria, he creates havoc everywhere, Herman. And, and what is the fallout? What is the consequence of his foreign policy, of Obama's foreign policy? Christians are being slaughtered. Jews, the whole Israel is destabilized. The whole Middle East now is destabilized because of our government policies. Everywhere Obama puts his hand, everything go, is, cr begins to crumble. And if we as Christians, after having that meeting, the Sunday after, the, that was a Tuesday, Tuesday morning I met with the staff, the Sunday after, Lindsey Graham came on all the su Sunday morning talk shows and what was his narrative? He was hitting every point that I brought up in my talking points in that meeting. Every one of them. Does it make a difference, Herman, when they know that I'm coming in there representing, because you know I serve as a special envoy at the United Nations for the World Council of Independent Christian Churches. They represent 44 million congregants around the world. Many of those congregants live in the Middle East. Many of their churches are destroyed or their Christians are murdered because of these failed policies. And does the Obama administration or Congress or Senate do anything to stop the slaughter of Christians? And again, where is the church leadership in this? 
if, if the church does not understand the very basic foundation. You just hit on it. Or the, the very church basic, yeah. the very basic foundation that Jews, that the enemy is advancing toward the Saturday people and the Sunday people, the pigs and the apes, the great Satan and the little Satan. This is a war for the soul of the world. And if we as Christians don't wake up and start putting pressure, does it have an effect when you call? Absolutely. We're seeing the impact of that effect in Tennessee within our legislature. We ended up, because our legislators saw how troublesome the, the information was in these textbooks, we had parents that we pulled together, um, reviewed 95 social studies, history and geography textbooks that were adopted in the state of Tennessee back in the fall. 95 textbooks, we were able to combine over 700 pages of inaccuracies and biases. And if we've used inaccurate bias textbooks in Tennessee for six years, and now the Department of Education, the Tennessee Textbook Commission just adopted more egregious textbooks for the next six years, Herman, that's one whole generation. We've just lost a whole generation well, of children in one state. Now multiply that because these textbooks, again, they're not just being used in Tennessee. They're being used in every county across the country. Florida. Are these people born in Tennessee that, that are actually doing this? Are they, are, were they educated in Tennessee? Some of them were. So they went to the universities. Them, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so it's coming out of the universities uh, and it, now they're, they're espousing everything they heard in the university. It started, yes. Of course, the universities have always been the targeted. Yeah. The, the targeted group. And of course, when you have educators, they're going into these universities too. And they're being taught this information. So when you have a teacher who's teaching this information, like this, this quote, that's what she was taught at the university that she graduated from. So she absolutely, she sees nothing wrong with it. But if you use your critical thinking skills, if you know your Bible, and you know, and really, yeah, Herman, this happened, well. No, knowing your Bible is actually illegal. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's, it's I mean, pathetic. The, the Constitution with an open Bible and on their knees, mm -hmm. they put the Constitution mm -hmm. together. Absolutely. And unfortunately, because Christians don't know their Bible, Herman, yeah. you're right. That Bible, if it were a thousand page book, yeah. Christians cannot start at page 800 and read to the end. Amen. You have to, you will know the end from the beginning. If you don't study, starting in the book of Genesis, you are not gonna know yeah. the whole history, right. the whole his That's story, right. yeah. the, whole, the whole plan and purpose yeah. that God has yeah. for Israel wow. and for the church. Because remember, Paul even said in Galatians 3.29, that if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. He told the believers in Ephesus in, in chapter two that you who were once outside of the commonwealth of Israel or the nation of Israel have now been brought near because of the blood of Yeshua. We have a responsibility, Herman, to open, stand and defend the covenant in that this book. this today. Lori has a challenge for you. God bless you, bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.